Okay, so the last live broadcast I did was a little bit long, a little bit messy, but I want to con- I want to make this one a little more concise. So, all right, there's a referral link in the description below. Five dollars, you get five dollars. I get five dollars. I get a little something out of the deal. But no, um, <laughs> it's really cool. Uh, I think it's a great product. I really do. I think the fact that you could choose the type of investment portfolio that you really want to have primarily is nice. Um, I'm a hundred percent socks on there. <laughs> this is like screw it. I'm doing a, I'm doing an aggressive portfolio. <laughs> What's up, my man? My man. I think it's Ty Dog right there. I'm pretty sure that's Ty Dog. Good old Ty Lord. But um, yeah, no, I signed up for Acorns, and I was like, you know, I gotta automate my investing a little bit. And I thought, well. It would be kind of cool to have one like, yeah. But yeah, I thought it would be kind of cool to have, uh, what do you call it? Uh, just trying to have all of my investing automated through rounding up my purchases. For example, I swipe my card at the register. <coughs> Let's say I buy a candy bar for like $1.50, right? Ring it up at the register, use my card. That $1.50 gets turned into $2, a $2 transaction. Now, not instantaneously. Here's how it works. There's a bit of a catch. So I use my card. Boom. $1.50 is charged in my card. Great. Now, Acorn sees that transaction and it says, okay, I see you spent $1.50, so we're going to round up a bit. I'm going to take I'm going to take $0.50 cents out of your bank account, right? I'm going to take that $0.50 cents right out of your bank account. And throw it into, by the way, this is a super glue, by the way. I got super glue on me somehow. JB Weld. Anyway, um, and you take that, <clears throat> we're going to take that 50 cents that we rounded up, and we're going to put it into your investments. Now, there's a bit of a catch to this. <clears throat> yeah, I'm happy I got the 900 subs, man. I'm almost to 1,000. Almost there. Almost there. I just got to keep making more content that's fresh and sexy. Oh, Yeah. At least I'm trying to make sexy content, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, no, it's nice to see that I got an, uh, 900 subscription subscribers. And, um, you know, the more the merrier, obviously. I want to have as many people watching the show as possible because I, I put a lot of effort into it. I think that what I teach is intelligent investing for the most part, diversification, looking for good companies if you can, if you're an individual investor. If you just want to do ETFs, I say, hey, do ETFs. No shame and just instant diversification. Boom. But um, outside of it, though, Acorns is a really cool program. And I I think it, it may not be for everybody. It is, th- it is $3 a month at the minimum just to have the investment account, which is worth it, by the way, considering that it automates a lot of processes and it allows you to fractionally invest instantaneously spreads your investments across the entire portfolio very evenly and automatically. So it's like there's win-win situations. Plus, <clears throat> it encourages me to not shop as much because I, I mean, I still like to shop, obviously, like for food. I still need to eat, but um, things of that nature. So like, <laughs> uh, my, uh, my, the shooting one, the one where I'm, showing a oh the one where I'm showing how to just shoot like that just right there boom and then yeah sometimes you can shoot like this elbow up you can shoot like this shoot from here I've seen some people shoot from here it just depends on where your initial spot is where your elbows pointed boom you can go like that you can go like this some I've seen some people do that some people do this and then I do this And uh, yeah, there's just so many different ways to shoot. Shooting science is so much fun when it comes to basketball because you're trying to find like, can I get good arc uh, to my shot? Can I still keep it accurate? I still got to make sure it goes towards the rim at some point. You know, is it it being pointed in the right direction? Is my shot messy? (laughs) Stuff like that. So uh, shooting a basketball is surprisingly, it's complex at first, but once you start figuring out like, the angles, the arcs that you need to get on your shot, how you need to point your elbow, where you need to point it, that matters. I mean, if you're pointing it up at the rim, boom, and you're you're pretty much golden. But yeah, you know, it's a it's 
shooting the basketball, I think, has become a little overly complicated, though I think too many people put too much thought into it. I say, look, as long as you're, you know, you could shoot here. You know, some people shoot here. Some people shoot here. Some people shoot here. So many variables into it. So many variables into shot signs. Anyway, I still want to talk about acorns a little bit more. I'm trying not to get too distracted here, but I do like uh, intervening into the live chats, though, whenever I can. Um, but, um, okay, anyway, with acorns, I swear I've got ADHD, man. I got ADHD. But with acorns, um, it gives you the, the sexy, beautiful ability to to round up your purchases. And of course the roundups don't come directly from the credit card. It's not like it's coming from the credit card to your account. It's technically <laughs> you're, you're it's calculating the roundups right beforehand. Acorns is once it gets to $5 in total roundups, then it says, okay, Hey, Hey bank, I'm going to take $5 out of your bank and I'm going to distribute it evenly into your portfolio on acorns. So I like using roundups only. That's the only reason I have acorns, by the way, is just for the pure fact that it allows, it allows me to automate that. Now it, it, you're probably wondering, well, why would you pay three bucks a month for that service? Well, it's, it's simple because it, the, the fact that it automates it so quickly and easily, and I don't have to think about it is very nice. It is actually more convenient than I thought. <laughs> yeah i i've got too many brokerage accounts for my own good to be honest but acorns is nice it, it's it's a very nice pro app i didn't expect that i'd like it so much but the more i looked into it the more research i did and i thought well it's accredited um it's not accredited i guess the, i guess that would be technically the right word but it, it's it's trustworthy basically your investments are safe in it so if acorns ever went solvent um you still get all your investments to yourself. It's still a legitimate brokerage, but it does a lot of automation for you. It takes, like I said, it rounds it up, rounds it up. So if I'm buying a $1 and 20 cent sandwich, I don't know where I'd be getting a dollar 20 cent sandwich from, but wherever it's at, I want it. Um, say I go to Mickey D's, I buy a couple big Macs where I buy a couple, uh, McChickens or something. Right. And it costs me like three twenty. uh, Acorns is going to see that transaction. They're going to see, hey, 320. That's th that transaction is 320, yo. So Acorns is going to be like, okay, we're going to round up. To, we're going to take, we're going to round that up to four dollars. That'll be 80 cents on our little tracker. And of course, like I said, once it gets up to five dollars worth of roundups, it'll say, okay, we've rounded up up to five dollars. Okay, we're good. Let's go to this this person's bank account. It'll be my bank account, of course. They'll take it, and then they'll. Woo, throw it into the investment, into into, into your investments, um, into all the ETFs, into the ETF. So it's like, it's really cool. It's really, um, <coughs> it's really trustworthy from what I've been able to tell. And uh, I think Acorns is going to be around for a while. I really wasn't too sure if I was going to like it. I wanted to give it a shot though. I really wanted to give it a true attempt to see if I would like it. And so far, so good. Plus, it's, um, like I said, all my dividend investments pretty much cover the $3 a month fee easily because I got a lot of investment. I got a lot of dividends that come in, and uh, that's kind of what they're for. They're there to cover additional bills. Um, I mean, I do reinvest my dividends for the most part, but <laughs> what's really cool is the dividends themselves will be reinvested in that account it, with acorns as well, they do the dividend reinvestment automatically into the portfolio. Now, me personally, I'm not a big fan of dividend reinvestment being done automatically, but if you have one brokerage dedicated to nothing but automation, then let it automate. And acorns, that's kind of what you're getting with acorns is full, easy automation without thinking about the investments. And it's full. I personally went with aggressive on my portfolio. I said, Hey, 100 100 percent stocks bro brony warriors bro no, no i gotta stop i gotta stop saying bro so much i also gotta stop wearing tank tops and but yeah i'm a messy boy right now look at that i so i broke my glasses everybody just want to let y'all know broke my glasses i have tape on them Ooh. yeah they're not looking too sexy at the moment i definitely gotta re i gotta clean these up pretty soon 
<laughs> Go Tim Smith, by the way. Woo! I had that with my bank for a long time. I had them round up whatever I spent. This is what this is what uh, Tim is saying. I spent to the nearest five dollars and put it in my investment account. That's awesome, man. That is awesome. I just <laughs> you too pretty sexy. <laughs> Tim, quit flirting with everybody. You gotta stop flirting with everybody, man. You gotta stop. Uh, you gotta stop showing your junk in the chat. I don't know. I, I wonder if that's possible. I wonder if YouTube's ever going to allow pictures in chat. Like, like let's say there's a channel that wants pictures to be in chat, which I don't. I, that's a box I'm not willing to open up. <laughs> Everybody be showing cock pics on my channel. They'd be like taking pictures of their dongs. That's not a good that's not a good idea, actually. We'll take that back. Not a good call. But um But yeah, Acorns is pretty cool. So anybody wants to sign up for it, um, I get five boners. I get five bucks. You get five bucks. So you get something out of it too. I want to make sure that one of the reasons why I sign up for these types of things is one, I get something out of it because everybody needs incentives. Two my viewers get something out of it. If my viewers can get something out of it, that's what I really want in the end. But, uh, <coughs> of course he, well, he likes Budweiser, which is, which is still, uh, which is still the gay beer, but no, it's just, it's all straight beer at Bud Light is straight. Budweiser is straight. Uh, I'm living in a bizarro fantasy probably, but, um, yeah, go. <laughs> I won't tell anyone. Oh my god. Tim, you're the goat, man. You're the goat. I love you both. You guys are great. See, I'm loving the dynamic in the chat right now. I love it, man. I feel like it's a it's it's a sausage fest, obviously. It's it's a, it's a sausage fest right now in the chat. So, um we need so I need some ladies to to touch my dudes that touch the dudes in the chat. Basically. Uh, I don't know how, I don't know how the ladies can actually touch the dudes in the chat. We'll figure that out. Um, basically my YouTube channel is, is basically becoming grinder. It's becoming a grind is becoming the grinder app. And I've, I've acknowledged this. I accept it. <clears throat> I look like the kind of guy that you'd find on grinder. I ain't going to lie. That's what I, that's what I look like. But, uh, Oh, by the way, as you can see in the background, you see that little glowing thing next to the Coors Light? You're going to see it's a terpene candle. It's uh, my brother's terpene candle. You got to buy the terpene candles, boys. You need them. You want them. Well, you have them. <laughs> I wonder, so I think I could get five bucks unlimited. I think like I can get five bucks forever, actually, from my Acorns referral link. Let me see what the limitations are. I was actually kind of curious about that just to see like, oh my God, I could get for like forever, forever. I mean, I would be totally down to just like to get $5 referral credits forever on this. I'm pretty sure most people who've signed up for Acorns actually have wanted to be uh, signed up for it. <clears throat> Surprisingly, people sign up for my Discover card link and that's really nice because I get a nice sweet statement credit. Let's see. Wow, so there, this is kind of cool. So, like, you get, like, um, if you sign up for certain products, like, if you sign up for, like, Instacart as a new customer, you get, like, $10 invested automatically just for being a new customer with, like, Instacart, for example. Um, DoorDash driver. Oh, wow. Hell, signing up as a DoorDash driver could get me $30 invested instantly. That's crazy. Get that gingerbread copper caps. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> oh, man. I may bring back. I know I'm going to bring back the hotline at some point, but I've been doing a lot of live shows where I'm just like talking away and just interacting with the chat as much as possible. I got to bring. I want to bring back the hotline, but I, I'm, I'm too tired. To, I, I, I think I can only handle looking at chats at the moment, <laughs> That if that makes sense. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll read aloud people's chats though. I will happily narrate the chats and I will answer them to the best of my ability. I will try my best. 
to touch your breasts, my friends. I'm trying to sound epic, but it's not working. I want to sound like a video game character, but I can't. I'm just an NPC in this video game. Hello. <laughs> I don't know, it's just bad voice acting right there. I'm going off on a tangent, everybody. It's my bad. My bad. My bad, but hey, uh, I'm excited though, almost to 1,000 subscribers, everybody. And <coughs> once again, I just want to thank everybody intensely. Um, seriously. And um, this show has gotten better and better and better because I see the subscriber count go up and I think, wow, people really want to watch this. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not going to pander, I don't pander to my audience. I don't, I try not to blindly agree either. I try not to be too agreeable, but, um, my main thing is I want to educate, but I'm open-minded. So people may not like everything I say. They may, they may disagree with my investment strategies. Um, I like it. I'm open to that. I need, I need dissent. I need dissenting opinions. I need, I like it when, I mean, you don't, don't disagree with me just to disagree with me. Disagree with me if you really passionately disagree with me because I like it. Um, <laughs> I'm smashing people in the ring, man. I'm, I'm coming from behind and I'm, well, I shouldn't say coming from behind like that. Oh, screw it. I'm coming from behind. I'm double fisting. I shouldn't say that either. Well, I don't know what my problem is. Too much Bud Light. Too much Bud Light. Too much Bud Light. No. Thank you, my man. I think my content's good enough. Like, my quality's gotten better. I got a better... <coughs> I got a better computer than I've ever had in my life, actually. I... I invested the hell into, the, into this new system that I got, but um, but this system's allowed me to actually have higher quality video production because I have a high quality webcam that's like top of the line, but my system wasn't really matching the hardware specifications needed to do a high quality 1080p stream. And I even uh, got my system plugged in directly to my router, which is good. I needed that to happen anyway because... I was getting dropped frames when I was doing when I was doing the Wi-Fi from and I was like, why don't I just freaking plug this thing in? So direct connection, as I always say, is the best connection. Um, Wi-Fi is good if you are not close to your router, obviously, but if you are next to your router, if your computer happens to be right next to it, just plug that bad boy in. Best advice I could say for streaming any day. Also, if you're ten, if you're doing a 1080p stream, make sure your bit rate is about 7,000 uh, kilobits per second. Uh, I think it's either bits or bytes. I know bits is usually um, a string of four pieces of binary, and then bytes is eight. I might be wrong on that. I, I can't remember my basic computer uh, data science, but <clears throat> but yeah, it's exciting, man. It's exciting times, and um, yeah, I wish I would hit uh, a thousand because YouTube tends to push out the content a little bit more. If you have 1,000 or more subscribers, it's, I mean, like, I, I even, I do a really good job with my hashtags. I do a great job with my tagging. Um, I don't even spam tag. I used to spam tag originally. I try not to do that anymore. Um, in fact, I, I, I just keep it to the essential tags that are related. So I got my tags at the bottom, my normal tags, like, you know, just like, keywords and shit and then I got the hashtags like I usually do about six I'm trying to do about six hashtags per video and on shorts I typically do about four hashtags in the title and that's it um, shorts are a little bit of a different monster the algorithm treats shorts differently in fact the algorithm pushes out shorts a lot more because I think they're trying to compete with TikTok and they're trying to they're definitely trying to encourage creators to um to push out the short content for sure. And uh, I've I've kind of had to roll with the times and do more short content. It's been interesting, uh, to say the least. <laughs> but it's been fun. Um, a lot of it's very homoerotic short material where I just have no shirt on. Um, and usually I have a bunch of Bud Light behind me. 
uh, in the, I use the green screen feature on the YouTube shorts <laughs> and I'm like drinking a monster energy drink or something like that, or I have like an empty can of monster that I'm pretending to drink out of. And I got like really, really homoerotic music playing in the background. So it's, it's fun. Th those videos that surprisingly get the most views, it, the, if, if I have no shirt on, basically, that's when I get more people viewing and they might end up turning away, but <laughs> I'll get the viewership for sure. Um, going off on a tangent, you guys, is it? <laughs> I started off wanting to spread the word of acorns, but I've gone on a massive tirade where I cannot return from. But yeah, I love doing live videos, though. Live videos um, are definitely the tits. Uh, especially when now that uh, my stream looks great, everything's looking fabulous. Um, I needed to get it done, and I got it done. The only thing I hate about streaming is the fact that if you if you do, because I I have to do thirty frames per second. Otherwise, if I did sixty frames per second, I would have to have a bit rate of like of like uh, almost up to nine thousand kilobits per second, and that is pushing. That is really, really pushing the upload limit because I did a speed test and I'm getting about maybe 11 megabits per second for my upload speed. That's, I mean, that's really pushing it. So I would have to up the bit rate in, in OBS to like 9,000 kilobits per second. So that's really, so I have to, I, so I have to intentionally keep my streams at 30, 30, well, sorry, 30 frames per second. I'm going, I'm going crazy here. So but when I do when I do pre-recorded videos though <coughs> when I do pre-recorded videos I like to keep the frame rate to 60 frames per second because the webcam that I'm using the Logitech Brio gives me the ability to do 60 frames per second but sometimes that's not always possible and you just have to sacrifice a little bit so so sometimes doing 30 frames per second when you do live streams good 60 frames per second when you're doing pre-recorded is fantastic. It makes you it really makes you look like you're truly moving in a more natural fluid motion. Uh, it's really cool because the camera, the camera captures everything, every movement you make. And it's really cool. So, but, uh, yeah, I could, I could, I could nerd out on this subject all day. I, I love creating a good show. Um, it's, it's weird that I have a show because this started out just me kind of wanting to see what I could put out there. Like, what could I throw out into the ether? And I started realizing, I was like, the only way this show can get better is if I just throw paint at the wall. Metaphorically speaking, of course, I don't want to do that to my wall. But, you know, throw shit at the wall. Just throw anything at the wall, right? And, and, um... And I just thought about it. I just kept throwing out ideas. Uh, any idea that I came up with, I just wrote it. I wrote it down. I started getting in the habit of trying to, if I didn't have a pen and paper, I got in the habit of storing it just in my head and making sure that I remembered it. Um, even if it was a bad idea, I was like, fuck it, it's an idea. Um, so I, I just kept piling on ideas. I keep writing down ideas. Like I said, throwing paint at the wall, man. You got to figure out something. And uh, the only way to create a piece of art is to just, I mean, you still want to have a vision in your head. <clears throat> Obviously, you don't want to just like go haphazard. You still have to move with a purpose. So I have a vision in my mind of what this show has to be. The purpose is I want to teach everybody. I don't care how old you are, even though my target audience really is kind of my generation or a little bit younger. Um, I, I, I don't really care who you are, though. I don't care if you're old, young. I want to make sure that I'm helping you understand the core concepts of investing really educating and keeping you on on task because finance it is a boring subject it really is boring but it can be fun if as long as you know what you're doing and the best way to know what you're doing is to learn from people who do it already and i do it i love investing like i love investing more than i love working my job and I, I actually enjoy working my job, by the way, just as a heads up. <laughs> but uh, I also just enjoy investing. It's, it's I I realize that I have the same mentality as Warren Buffett. Um, and I thought, well, 
you, you know, you kind of have to go with what is what you're naturally good at sometimes. And if you especially, you know, it's really great is if you're naturally good at something and you happen to enjoy it, like really, really enjoy it, then it's a no brainer. Go for it. Um, and what's great about investing is I'm, I get money coming at me at all times. And that's fucking great. <laughs> but. <clears throat> Woo. Yeah, I was trying to think of anything else I want to mention. Oh, well, there we go. But yeah, definitely excited about the whole acorns prospect. I, I never thought I'd get into it. And I just thought I just kind of got a wild hair in my ass. And I was like, well. Um, one of my apps actually was giving away a promotion, like a $20 free investment credit. If you just put down like $20 or $5 into your account, and I was like, okay, so I just got to put $5 into my account and I get $20. This is like a referral though, from some app called Jerry. It's a car insurance app, which is really cool. Helps you find really good deals on car insurance. And, uh, because of that, I actually pay like a really low rate for my car insurance. So it's pretty sexy. Woo! But anyway, I've been jabbering on too much. If anybody has any anything they want to add in the chat, by the way, I could I could see everything in the chat unless the chat has finally got disconnected or something. But but yeah, hopefully everybody <coughs> wants to sign up for Acorns. Not not everybody has to, obviously. But if you haven't signed up for it, it it's surprisingly kind of awesome. I didn't think that I would be into it. I really didn't think I'd be into it. But I'm into it. It, it. Like I said, it's the automation side of it. It's the fact that it already sets up a really well allocated portfolio for you. And it's one that I would allocate myself. At least it's fairly similar to the one that I'd allocate. And I agree with it completely. It's 100% stocks. Um... I'm not much of a bonds guy. I've been telling people that for years. I don't like bonds. There's not there's not a lot of growth potential, but also the payouts are not that great in bonds. Just saying. Um, I'd rather have a 50-50 split cover call ETF where 50% of the positions that are held within the ETF itself is uh, basically covered by call contracts. And that's a bit of a t crazy subject. I, I think I've, exp I've explained it in a couple of videos. Um, I kind of do a more in-depth explanation as to why cover call ETFs can be nice. But you don't want to go with a cover call ETF that does 100% of the portfolio uh, with call contracts. It, it calls are, it's, it's, it's a tricky subject, but damn. I'm actually kind of pissed because, like, I got a four-day weekend coming up. And, you know, worse things could happen, obviously. But I, I got to go get a new pair of glasses. This is just not going to do. Like, I'm lucky that tomorrow is my Friday. But, uh, yeah, this sucks. It's, it's the glasses, man. Ugh. That's a rough ride, man. The, the, all, all that happened was I was, in the, I was in the shower. These were sitting on next to the sink. They just whoop, drop right on the floor crack right in half it's usually pretty sturdy but yeah pretty thin here so tried to tape it back together using gorilla tape it'll do for tomorrow but uh, i will say once monday hits and most of the vision centers are open up uh i'm definitely going to get a new pair of balls no a new pair of glasses anyway um <clears throat> what is your hit the wall number what monthly dividend total do you get to when you stop reinvesting them and start spending? Well, here's the thing. I spend money like um, like it's not that I don't. It's not that I don't actually spend money. I still spend money. I just don't spend a lot of it. Um, I just kind of take a percentage of what I make from work. Um, I take a percentage. Actually, I take a percentage of my dividends that I get already. I just throw those into investments and I just kind of let the rest of the dividends sit until I figure out what I want to do with them. <laughs> Sometimes I keep a certain amount just because I want to pay taxes without having to sell any of my existing positions. Um, I, I guess 
if there is a hit the wall number, I'm not too sure where it's at. So truth is, I don't know what my hit the wall number would be. Um, I never really set up one, I guess. I just kind of do everything by percentages. Like I kind of have, I have a ethos, uh, not an ethos, but um, I guess you could say an ethos. I'm trying to remember. Um, I guess you could say I have a motto, a mantra or something that uh, I got to pay myself first. So that's my goal. I, whatever I get paid from work, I got to pay myself first. I got to invest first because when you invest, you're technically paying yourself first. And um, that's pretty much it. I don't really have a hit the wall uh, strategy. I, I guess I don't necessarily know what hit the wall means in this instance. So, I mean, if you... Tim, if you could give me a little more explanation of what the hit the wall number would be, I, I could kind of have a better idea because maybe I'm not understanding because sometimes certain things just go right over my head. I'm blonde, so. <laughs> but yeah, certain things definitely go over my head for sure. Well, sorry, boys. I'm a little bit tired at the moment, but uh, this will probably be my last stream for the night. I'm not going to stay on too much longer. Uh, I might upload some short videos, though. I'm thinking about it, but thinking, thinking, and thinking. Whew. Yeah, still got nothing. Hit the wall means your dividend reinvestments like like when you get five so Tim Smith is saying like like it when you get five hundred a month let's see one thousand a month when you stop reinvesting dividends and just spend oh I see what you're saying I see what you're saying okay um well I kind of already do that now like I split them in half. Like I split my dividends in half a lot of the time. Sometimes I will, whatever I'm getting, I'll just look at the number and I'll just split it in half and I'll take that money, half of that money and just throw it right back into my um, checking account and I won't do anything with it. Just let it sit there. And then the other half, I just kind of reinvest it into whatever, or I might just let it sit. I mean, I'm, I'm really not very consistent with my div dividend reinvestment plans. I reinvest my dividends, just not just not all of them. Like I said, I'm an inconsistent bastard. I'm the first to admit I don't always have a consistent strategy with dividend reinvestments. I'm very, this is going to sound illogical as hell, but I'm very mood based with how I reinvest my dividends. Um, and it's not a way. It's not really the best recommended way to do things. Um. I would just rather spend my dividends however I want, whether it's reinvesting them, whether it's putting it into my bank account, um, than actually selling my positions. Because my goal is to never sell my assets. Never. I don't want to sell them ever. I want to just have my assets sitting in my brokerages. I want to have them pumping money at me just all the time. And that's it. Um, just let them pump money at me. Um, and then, I, yeah, I like to reinvest when I can, sincerely. And, and like I said, sometimes I just let my dividends sit there because I'm just like, I don't, I don't see any opportunities right now. Um, sometimes I'll just throw it into anything. Um, but it's got to be, I got to throw it into something worthwhile <laughs> a lot of the times. I hope that answer helps. It's, I'm a, I'm a decent person to model an investment strategy in general out, out of just, I think people modeling my dividend reinvestment plans are going to be upset with me because <laughs> I really don't think my div my dividend investment strategy uh, reinvestment strategy is garbage. I'll be the first to admit it. It's not bad. Well, I guess it is kind of trash. I'll admit it's trash. Yeah, but my overall investment my overall investing strategies like where I put my money when it comes to what I'm investing in, that's solid. 
Dividend reinvestment strategy, though. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's bad. I hope that helps, Tim. <laughs> Probably doesn't help that much, but maybe it gives you a better idea what goes on to the old noggin, at least. But well, hopefully. <laughs> I constantly wonder, though, because, you know, like, my bit rate for my stream is about, like, uh, 7,000 kilobits per second. Um, I wonder I wonder what um, wonder what R. Kelly's stream rate is. Yeah, I wonder what R. Kelly's streaming right now. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean by stream, right, with R. Kelly? I love R. Kelly. No, just kidding. I don't want to mention him too much on my channel. May not be a good idea. Um, but anyway, what is the greatest? Tim Smith asks, what is the greatest video game system of all time? Well, that's tough. That is real tough because a video game system also depends on what games came out for it. Because a, a lot of innovative games have come out on even the older consoles. But I was going to say, <coughs> if we're going with greatest video game system of all time, uh, PS2, PlayStation 2 is up there because of the level of interesting games that came out in that era for the PS2, just as far as gameplay is concerned. Graphics, obviously, you're never going to beat the modern systems, but um, I will admit, in modern video games, video gaming, gaming has improved a lot since I last was playing video games very intensely. Um, I would have to say probably... Just based on specs and also the games that have been released, I think PS5, PlayStation 5 probably is the greatest system right now in the market. Could be even considered greatest all time just because its hardware uh, capabilities are insane. Um, but it has good titles from what I've been able to tell. PS4 was pretty solid though. I've always been a I've always been very partial in and in, uh, in love with the PlayStation consoles though um never was really a huge xbox guy I just you know i like pc gaming obviously but never was like a hardcore xbox dude i like xbox though just never was hardcore on it um so xbox isn't going to be in like my top tier list um i like nintendo i love nintendo products um, as far as it goes, the games that they have are very creative, very incredible, by the way. It's just some of the types of games are just not my style of, play, of games to play. I'm really more of a role-playing game kind of guy, like I love RPG games, um, I love first-person shooter games, and, and you can't really do a lot of first-person shooters easily on consoles, at least in my opinion. I'm a mouse and keyboard kind of guy, so I'm more partial to playing PC games than I am to being even playing console games at all. Um, that's a tough one. Best video game franchise of all time. I would probably say, um, Final Fantasy, the Final Fantasy, um, franchise has been my favorite and probably the most successful, uh, if you're going straight up monetarily. And also, just in general, I think a lot of people love Final Fantasy. It's one of the greatest uh, just video game franchises of all time. Um, if I'm going to go a second, though, for the best game franchise, I'd probably, I would definitely say Mario for sure. The Mario games have been incredible over the years. Um, let's see. But yeah, Final Fantasy is number one for sure. And number three, I'd probably say. Uh, Let's see. Hmm. I kind of want to say Halo, but uh, Halo is actually not one of my favorites. But, uh, if I was trying to be objective, maybe Halo, though. Mm. It's iffy on Halo. Uh, but third best, I would have to say... I've definitely liked a lot of the Star Trek games that have come out, but I, I don't. I wouldn't really count those a part of a real video game franchise. It's more of a... TV, TV franchise is what Star Trek truly is, but mm, 
making me think. The third best has always been str- a struggle for me. <laughs> I know Final Fantasy is always number one in my mind. Um, yeah. I mean, the Zelda series obviously is a classic. There's been a lot of Zelda games. Um, but the Zelda games never really been my favorite games, truthfully. Um, all-time favorite stock? Um, ooh, that's a good one. Um, I wrestle with this one, actually. I like Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola has always been my number one. If, I, if we're going by, like, ones I love the most is Coca-Cola. Uh, mainly because um, they're really good to their shareholders. They're a very profitable company. Low operational costs. A lot of assets in general. Not a lot of not a shit ton of liabilities. But they're really good about being financially relevant and financially intelligent. They have a wide product pipeline, by the way. Wide. Um, I, 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 the only thing that always bothered me was their dividend ratio. I think it's a little bit high. I think they have like an 80% payout, which is really extreme. And when I say 80% payout, that's just like after earnings. And that's just like, you know, after they've paid everybody they need to pay, you know, uh, what are the leftover profits? And they 80% of those leftover profits go to the shareholders. 20% goes back into the company. But yeah, Coca-Cola is number one. Number two, though. I'd have to say it's realty income for sure. I do like a real estate investment trust 24 seven. Um, number three though. Hmm. Hmm. And I, I, I personally, I always have trouble picking my number one stocks. I, I love a lot of them and it's sometimes it changes. Like that's the funny part is it changes the list. The top five list have, remains fairly consistent for the most part. Um, I like having a bank. So Bank of America is typically my number three. Um, yeah. I'm a simple man. I re- When it comes to my stock portfolio, I'm a simple boy. Just saying. Checking my phone out real quick here. Well, that's kind of cool, man. I was looking at some of these um, little deals they got in the uh, Acorns app. Just so many cool ones. Um, so it's interesting. You get like cashback rewards in a sense when you purchase something online through the Acorns app. It's kind of interesting, like with one of their like affiliated sponsor things. So if there's something that you really need to purchase, this can be. Kind of advantageous. Hmm. Groupon. All right. Yeah, that's kind of how it rolls, man. But yeah, I got I got a lot of interesting uh, takes and explanations for my. I'll say that I'll say this. I'm I'm sadly not always consistent. I'm I'm consistent. I try to be consistently great, but um, when it comes to certain things, when it comes to the stock market stuff like that, I could be a little inconsistent. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I could be super inconsistent. Um, because sometimes my mind changes a little bit, especially when I'm presented with new information, stuff, things of that nature. But yeah, um, oh man, I just love being on YouTube though. Uh, I, I got to admit, I, see, you know, I, I got to take that back. Hold on. I got to take something back. Uh, one of my favorite stocks just on analysis alone, 
I'll put Google as a fourth, maybe even a third, maybe even second. Like I said, it's tough for me to choose stocks because I, I have so many of them, so many loves. When it comes to stocks, I love so many stocks, man. It's crazy. It's crazy. I just can't choose my fave. Hope it all makes sense, though. Oh, yeah. But if anybody's got any other questions, though, I think I'm going to end this live stream here in a second. Because I am straight up exhausted right now. I don't know why. <laughs> well, actually, I know why. I'm just tired. I've just been emotionally, a little emotionally drained for some reason. But anyway, folks, thank you guys for taking the time to view this episode and uh, have an incredible rest of the night and have fun, okay? Woo! Oh, okay. All time favorite fast food item. Um, the McChicken from McDonald's. If we're going to list each fast food restaurant, I'll, I'll list them all, actually. Fuck it. So uh, for McDonald's, McChicken, but it, McChicken is my number one of, out of every single restaurant. McChicken for sure. Um, but yeah, McChicken from McDonald's. Um, uh, spicy Chicken Crisp from Burger King. Um, double Pepperoni Pizza from Domino's. I, love, I just love pizza. I'm a pizza guy. Um, the Extra Cheesy. Uh, hot and ready pepperoni pizza from Little Caesars is always solid. Um, what else we got? Um, Subway, I like the meatball marinara, it's the best sub sandwich you could ever have. Um, hmm, outside of it though, hmm, trying to think. <laughs> a lot of good, a lot of good selections out there though. I'm not very picky though. I'll eat just about anything, but I, I mean, everybody's got preferences. Obviously, there's certain certain places that are always tasty. Oh, Taco Bell! I forgot to do Taco Bell. Um, I do like, like, even though it's a little more expensive, is the Chalupa. I love the Chalupa. I'm a Chalupa boy. Um. So Chalupa is my Taco Bell, favorite Taco Bell item. Uh, trying to think what else. Um, other fast food joints that I particularly love. Mm. Minecraft or Roblox. <laughs> I was going to say, um, Minecraft has been one of the more successful, I, I'm not, it's funny, I'm not super familiar with Roblox, I don't even know, I don't even know how successful Roblox is at this point, but, uh, Minecraft, though, I know is a super successful gaming franchise, big time. Oh, and by the way, with fast food, if I'm going to add one more to the, uh, list, um, I'm trying to think of another restaurant I've neglected here. Uh, I got Taco Bell, got Mickey D's. Uh, Carl's Jr. Um, Jack in the Box is always solid. I like Jack in the Box. Um, I definitely love to eat uh, their greasy ass tacos. I love those greasy fucking tacos, by the way. That's where it's at. That's about it, though, you guys. I um, I'm tired, so definitely tired right now. Um, all time soft drink. Uh, what is people's obsession with Mountain Dew? I haven't had one in years, but some I like Mountain Dew. Mountain Dew's incredible. Um. It's definitely not good for you. There's a lot of crazy shit in Mountain Dew. But, uh, oh, fuck. You give me, like, 
Mountain Dew, um, the blue one. It's like the, the Mountain Dew High Voltage or something is my favorite. Um, God, I love Mountain Dew so freaking much. You know, made me drink Mountain Dew again. I haven't had it in a while. I drink Monster Energy drinks at this point. Monster Energy drinks are sick. I love them, uh, especially when you order them off Amazon. When you order Monster Energy from Amazon, it's a lot cheaper than getting them in the stores because you can buy them in like 15 packs or 24 packs, depending on the flavor you get. Um, so I get them for pretty dirt cheap at this point, which is really nice. Now, I need Monster. I need some sort of caffeinated beverage, whether it's coffee, but I prefer Monster just because I love the taste. I, I, I don't mind. I love that. I love the zero sugar. I love the general taste of it. It tastes great. And um, I'm a monster boy, man. I love that shit. I'm all about that life. I can't help myself. I just can't help myself. Yeah. I gotta stop singing. <laughs> but. Yeah. Hope that gives y'all a better idea. But anyway, guys, I'm out, man. I am tired. I really am tired at the moment. I, 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 I can't help but answer questions, though, when I see them in front of me. I got problems, boys. I got problems. But anyway, um, sit down, probably read a book for a bit, get my shit together. But hey, man, best thing we got to recommend to everybody, keep on learning. Just to always try to personally educate yourself in any way you can. Watch videos, read books. Learn things, uh, learn things that you're interested in, you know, find a subject matter that you want to rock it in and, uh, in your country or city. Um, yeah, it's, uh, currently 1150, 1150 PM. Well, what time is it for you? <laughs> Now, hopefully where you're at, it's not too, uh, not too late. But yeah, hopefully I get, um, I, I'm just really hoping I get, um, that 1000 subscribership, you guys really, really, really wanting it bad. Want it hard, <laughs> but um, we're getting there. We're getting there. Um, oh, it's daytime where you're at, man. Uh, it's already it's nighttime where I'm at. <laughs> All right, boys. But I am. Yeah, yeah. It's already uh, lunchtime for you, man. Anyway. You guys, I'm out. I got to get to bed. Well, I mean, I got to get some shit done before going to bed, but I'm just a tired boy right now. But hey, thanks, you guys, for viewing. I appreciate it, and just have a splendid rest of the night.